Hi everyone, my name is Hao Yu. I'm a PhD candidate at the School of Creative Media, City University of Hong Kong. Today, I'm going to present my paper titled "Computer Games as Social Sculptures: Rethinking the Discourse of Participation and Its Implications for Digital Game Design." In this paper, I will bring together the discussions of participatory design and participatory art, seeking to expand the notion of participation in digital gameplay. Then, I will propose a participation-centered game design approach that is politically responsible and engaging, providing new perspectives for analyzing participation in computer games. The notion of participation is often implied in participation-centered game design and participatory game design, which are both related to the general participatory design method in HCI. Participatory design is loosely defined as a set of practices that involve user in the design process as co-designers. It can be used during different stages of the game design process, from the initial conceptualization to further playtests. However, current studies of participation in game design and game studies tend to take participation for granted, without investigating the origins of participation in the gameplay process. What the concept of social sculpture can add to this body of work is an expansive definition of participation. So, what is social sculpture? It is coined by German artist Joseph Beuys in the late 1960s to refer to both a set of beliefs and A nominal category of artworks, as a set of beliefs, social sculpture declares that everyone is an artist. As a nominal category, social sculpture describes an artwork that takes place in the social realm, an art that requires social engagement, the participation of its audience for its completion. While social sculpture is mostly an art historical term, it can be relevant for our discussion of computer games. In order to understand this connection, we have to take a closer look at Boyd's social sculpture practices, which are mainly reflected in his dialogical works and performative actions. The former is exemplified by his conceptual work "Office for Direct Democracy by Referendum," presented at Documenta Five, as shown on the left side. In this work, Boyd transformed the gallery into a space for discussion with visitors about social problems in West Germany. The latter can be seen in his work "Seven Thousand Oaks," installed for Document Seven on the right side, in which Boyd, with the help of local citizens, planted seven thousand oak trees around the city of Kassel. Boyd's dialogue work often engages with. The participants in direct dialogues, whereas his performative actions can be seen as interventions of socio-political reality. To map it onto the practice of digital gameplay, we can locate the dialogue dimension in the discursive exchange between players and designers and among players, and the actional dimension in the players' reappropriation of the game for socio-political intervention. So, building on this mapping. This paper further proposes two sets of questions to analyze and evaluate the dialogic and actional dimensions of digital games, concerning what kind of dialogues and actions can be activated in the digital play. Are the game rules open enough to enact dialogues and actions? Can the in-game dialogues and actions echo real-life discourses or actions? How can the players' dialogues and actions inside and outside the game? Reshape the game itself and sculpt the social organism over the long term. Here, I will simply label this question as Q A one, Q A two, etc., and use these labels to identify them in the case studies. In the first example, let's look at the dialogic dimension in Mola Industrial's game, Democratic Socialism Simulator. It is a game that lets the player be the first socialist president of America. And make decisions about public policies. As the game designer mentioned, this game has a significant element of randomness, so that the player can only guess. Therefore, with each playthrough and each choice, the player gets to know about the game rules, which enables a direct dialogue with the game designer. Because of such openness embedded in the game rules. What the game provided is not a clear message predefined by the designer, but an environment for the player to test out different political ideas. 
The Indian discussions can be easily extended to political discourses in real life. For example, on the discussion board on Kotaku, many players are debating the in-game option of nationalizing Amazon. The dialogues triggered by this game has prompted people to reflect on actual policy proposals. In a sense, this game can be seen as an online version of Boyd's conceptual work Office for Direct Democracy by referendum introduced before. In the second example, we will look at the actional potential in a mainstream game, Minecraft. As a classic sandbox video game, Minecraft encouraged the players to participate in a range of harmless activities such as crafting tools, building shelters. Since the game doesn't set any specific goal for the player to accomplish, it leaves a lot of room for innovative actions to take place. For example, Minecraft player Pippen FPS initiated a project called Build the Earth, which is to recreate a one-to-one -one scale Earth in Minecraft. He gathered thousands of players online to manually build human-made cityscapes in Minecraft. And similar to Boy's 7,000 Oaks, Build the Earth project involves the participation of thousands of players, which turns this in-game action into a collective online performance. This player-initiated action was later mentioned in Minecraft's news release on Earth Day 2020, indicating that this action was incorporated by the game and reshifting the power relations between the player and the designer. These two examples here demonstrate a new ways of understanding dialogue and action in computer game, concerning how players' collective dialogue and action can have a potential impact on the social and political reality. Let me draw my conclusions here. By drawing on the concept of social sculpture, this paper extended the definition of participation in game design and analysis to, both, to include both dialogic and actional participation which added a previously missing political dimension to traditional participation-centered game design model and reinforced a collaborative relationship between designer and player. In this sense, to draw on social, to draw on social sculptural in game analysis and design is an attempt to politicize the practice of game design and call for a participation-centered game design approach that is politically responsible and engaging. Such politicization of participation is particularly important in our hyper-industrial age, where participation itself has become the commodity. That's all. Thank you.